back today and we're going to talk about the chemist polymer chain model. Um, so, so far we've neglected a lot of things uh, and we've had kind of a really an unphysical model. I think that's a really good term for it. Um, and we've kind of ignored all these ideas of bond angles, uh, excluded volume, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Really kind of cool concept, excluded volume. Uh, rotations, RAS states, uh, solvents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All, basically any chemistry has been ignored so far. Chemistry has not been important. But as much as I don't like it, chemistry is a little bit important. <laughs> so we are going to see and introduce and develop uh, basically this chemist polymer chain model in solution and in the melt. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to consider bond angle restrictions. We are going to uh, uh, take into account solvent quality. We're going to introduce this parameter uh, called the Flory characteristic ratio. Ratio. Uh, C infinity. We're going to introduce alpha, which takes care of our basically solvent. So we are going to get a scaling. The governing equation for the model we're going to get is this. So C alpha is what I've kind of said, this Flory characteristic ratio. That is going to take into account bond angles, theta, rotational iso uh, isomeric states or kind of torsional angles, phi. It's also going to kind of take into account some concepts of exclusion volume. Uh, and then we're going to also deal with alpha, which takes into account solvent quality, uh, E sub MM, these interactions, enthalpic interactions between monomers, enthalpic interactions between monomers and solvent, enthalpic interactions between solvent and solvent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's also going to kind of take into account some excluded volume ideas as well. So the cool thing uh, that I like about the chemist ch uh, chain model is what happens if I set C infinity equal to one and if I set alpha equal to one? Well, my solution reduces to R squared to one half equals N to the one half L. What does that look like? It's our ideal chain model. So if we ignore chemistry, if we set all these values equal to one, then we, re we reproduce our ideal chain model. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. So we're going to kind of uh, uh, build up and we're going to kind of tackle uh, each of these uh, parameters in a uh, basically in its own video. Uh, so today, in this video, we're going to start off and we're going to look just uh, to begin with, with bond angles. So we are going to kind of take into account and figure out what goes into this expression uh, that will make it larger or smaller and how we can kind of predict whether it will be larger or smaller depending on our uh, materials that we choose. So, or the polymers and the chemistry and the backbone structure and all that other good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we now have uh, taken into account bond angles, our situation gets a little bit different. So if we look at this uh, example, now we do not have just basically back and forth. So our angles now cannot just be theta equals zero or theta equals degrees, or theta equals minus 180 degrees. There will be some bond angle here that's determined again by, you know, uh, if we're here, we know we're tetrahedral, so we know that the bond angle here and here it's going to be that 109.5, you know, your tetrahedral bond angle between here and here. So we're, it's going to have that uh, essentially angle. Again, this is, we draw it linearly, but uh, remember, this is tetrahedron. I think it's like 104. Don't quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, we know that bond angle is going to be uh, different. So when we look at R and we do, so the, we are no longer, so we are no longer uncorrelated. So there are correlations here. This monomer has to be a certain bond angle. Uh, the angle must be correlated between monomer L1, excuse me, L1, L2, L3, L4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I do the dot product between L1 and L1, I still recover cosine of zero degrees. I still get my L squared. So if we look at our basically matrix, excuse me, right here. If we look at our matrix, the new matrix, we still see that our diagonal components here are still L squared. The issue comes into play, I'm going to redraw right here, one, two, three, four. The issue now becomes, what's the dot product between L1 and L2? Well, it's going to be L squared times your cosine of theta or minus cosine of theta, depending on, again, how you, uh, this could be either plus or minus, depending on how you initially define uh, <laughs> basically your angle. Uh, so are we taking the projection uh, 
because again, we're going to project essentially this angle uh, right here in this uh, kind of math here. So that angle between L1 and L2, it's going to eventually get projected uh, as that cosine there. So, but anyways, a little bit more on that later. So this can be positive or negative depending on, again, how, you, uh, how you're determining negative or positive uh, in the projection. But anyways, uh, so that is what we're going to get between L1 and L2. What about L1 at L3? L squared is still the same. Well, that bond angle between L1 and L3, it's going to get projected again. So you're going to get this minus cosine, uh, or this cosine, positive or negative, again, depending on how you uh, initially define that, squared. So you are going to get basically an expression that's going to continue and continue and continue because, again, this angle gets projected here. The angle gets projected onto this one as well and projected onto here and here and here. Uh, all the way, you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, et cetera. So you can see how that uh, kind of continues. So you get an expression that looks like this. That any when i does not equal uh, j, uh, we are not basically, and when in, basically it's this m, uh, we are going to kind of get this expression where it's just going to be this cosine to whatever the m power is. So if it's L2, i plus m, uh, we're going to get that uh, L1. So if we have, for example, L1 dot L2, so we know m is equal to 1, so we get that minus cosine theta, or cosine theta again. It doesn't matter the sign, uh, again. But it's the, the key thing is we get the scaling because the projection of the bond onto the next neighbor. So it's projected onto the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Uh, and that's why you get that, again, uh, that scaling behavior there. So the summation is gets much, 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 much more complicated. So you could kind of do this in mathematics and convince yourself, but in the end, you'll get an expression uh, like so right here, where here is your theta, uh, here's your r squared. Uh, again, it's this function of nl squared. And here we have just defined, we are only considering the fixed, the bond angles, not the rotation. We have not yet touched upon this torsional angle, these rotational isomeric states uh, yet. So, you get this expression for C infinity. So that's it. Uh, and we know that, again, by, uh, by taking into account, by plugging in kind of values for bond angles, C infinity is going to be at least, you know, greater than or equal to 1. Uh, because, and it makes sense, right? This is, should be a multiplier. It should increase our RMS distance. Previously, we were able to kind of cross over on each other, uh, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If we now restrict bond angles, so that we can't cross over, we can't do these events where the bond angles must be, actually we haven't talked about that yet, but that's gonna be included a little bit later. But if we restrict that bond angle, our end-to-end -end distance is gonna increase from uh, that previous scenario where we could just kind of cross over on itself. Uh, so we should expect that end-to-end -end RMS distance to increase. And that kind of makes sense again with the expression that we have here. Uh, that's exactly what we uh, obtain there. And this C infinity, which we've mentioned previously, is called the Flory characteristic ratio. Uh, it's basically physically, again, this is the key thing. I want the physical interpretation um, of your kind of uh, data and how you kind of analyze uh, and look at these uh, polymers. It's basically a measure of the stiffness of your monomer unit or how hard it is to rotate. So, uh, oh, look, I was right. <laughs> uh, so I was correct on my bond uh, <laughs> angles. Anyways, um, and Flory is going to be really, really important. Uh, we're going to talk, to him, uh, talk about him a lot in this course, a lot in Lecture 4. Um, but anyways, the key thing is that exactly that stiffness of the monomer unit. So difference between, so we're we thinking, we're thinking about this polymer, how hard it is to rotate, the stiffness of these bonds. This polymer versus a polymer like this, this group here, this, each going to have a very different, right, um, which is going to have the larger uh, C infinity value. This one, much, much stiffer bonds, harder to rotate, it's fixed, rigid, extended, that is going to be have a larger uh, C infinity. So much, 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 much more coming about that uh, later on in this course, looking at these chemical structures, but you can kind of get a sense, um, again, this difficulty, how hard is it to rotate, that's what's going to uh, govern that C infinity value. Uh, and again, Keep the math in mind, but that's the physical interpretation that I'm looking for in this course. So uh, next time, so we've covered C infinity is a function of two parameters, theta, our bond angle, phi, and some excluded volume, which also is kind of encapsulated in here, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So 
We could tick off theta. You're an expert in that now. Even if uh, you can kind of, again, convince yourself on the, uh, do the geometry. Hopefully you remember from statics, uh, those projection of bond angles and other, all, those, other, like, all that good stuff. But next time we're getting into phi, which is that torsional, torsional angle. You got rotational isomeric states that we talked about previously in our course. So how difficult it, how difficult is it for our bonds to kind of rotate around these bond angles? And so that's going to depend a lot, again, on your chemical structure. So I'll leave you with this. Which is going to be harder to rotate? Our old friend polyethylene? Polyethylene just gets crap. I always make fun of it. Or good friend, polystyrene. Which is going to be harder to rotate around this bond? Well, we'll, we'll figure that answer in the next video. So uh, I will see you all next time. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, again, keep the physical interpretation at the forefront when you're looking at this course. Um, don't get too lost in the derivation, but know what is being, what's involved there. Uh, what are the assumptions? All right. I'll see you all next time. We'll talk about some rotational isomeric states. Bye.